Trans people are very, very scared. Having to constantly fight to be who you are. I've had abuse for what I do. It's extremely frightening. Gender has become a battleground. A man who's telling me that he's a woman and that if I don't accept that, I'm a Nazi. <laughs> Issues so toxic, violence has erupted. These radical feminists, they'd lost the plot. Trans women are, by definition, male. We know that 80% have penises. It feels very violent. Back off. It's not your fight. It's the fight for the right to be a woman. Elijah is visiting his sister in Leicester. Oh, too long. Come in, come in. You're right. Yeah, I'm good, thank where you. Where he grew up as a girl. I just had memories of you in your football kit in the back garden. Yeah. Playing football and rolling around with <laughs> your best friend playing army. And then I went as David Beckham to the Millennium yeah. <laughs> yeah. New Year's party. Now working as an actor, Elijah's showreel showcases not only his talent, but mirrors some of his own personal experiences. You started to change the actual physical makeup of your body, didn't you? Yeah. You started to go into the gym more. Yeah. To be able to build your muscles around your shoulders yeah. and, and give you that more masculine curve around your neck. Mm. Elijah finally transitioned at the age of 24. Even when you did come out, it, it was quite glaringly obvious. The next morning, I remember Mum coming in, bringing me a cup of tea in the morning, and then sitting on the bed and she just started crying. Mm. She said, it's just been so hard already and we don't want it to be harder. Um, and I remember just being like, but this is better. Yeah. This is good, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Although Elijah lives as a man, he hasn't applied to legally change his gender. This is possible under the 2004 Gender Recognition Act, but only after a series of tests have been passed, described by many as onerous and humiliating. It's estimated there are up to 500,000 transgender people in the UK. Our research found in the last year, 12,253 people were seen by NHS gender identity clinics in England. But only 4,910 gender certificates have ever been issued. So the government's considering simplifying the process, allowing self-identification. When I was five years old, I realised that I wasn't like other boys and I started looking for girls clothes. I went to university as a man but at night I would be Sue. Sue Pascoe has fully transitioned and legally changed her gender and for her it was a long and arduous process. For years she was married with children. When our first child came along she didn't think that Sue should be in our lives and that it wasn't right for the children. And I agreed to that, and I went into an internal prison. In 2014, she finally became Sue, traveling to India for surgery when faced with a three-year waiting list in the UK. Today I'm at peace, and now I'm legally female. So I have a female birth certificate. Um, I would be buried as a female, and if God forbid I ever got into prison, I would go to a woman's prison. Feminists are against moves to make the process Sue went through to legally change her gender easier. Concerned self-identification could be abused, compromising female-only spaces and eroding women's rights. In North London, a group of women are waiting to make a splash. <laughs> posing as men to invade the male-only pool. <clears throat> Female swimming pond there, male swimming pond here, that's the way it has always been. 
They believe the idea of self-identification, the ability to tick a box to be seen as a woman in the eyes of the law, is ludicrous. OK, just let you know, you're breaking the bile. You have the swimming ponds here, you have Swim England who do the swimming pools, you have the sleeper trains, you have the Youth Hostel Association, you have girl guys. All these places say, as soon as you say the magic words, I am a woman, that's it, you're a woman, and you can access women's spaces. The stunt was organised by Hannah Clark. We protest about bathrooms and we protest about changing rooms, but those aren't the, the big deals, are they? It's, it's, it's places where women are vulnerable that are a big problem. So prisons and hospital wards and refuges are a massive issue. And it's been in the news, hasn't it? Ian Huntley could get a gender recognition certificate and get a new birth certificate, become to all intents and purposes a woman and be housed in the female prison estate. If anyone can be a woman, what is to protect a woman in a woman's space? It actually feels quite painful to have a group of people who are campaigning against your participation in everyday life. We went to Manchester to meet Jess Bradley. I identify as a, as a non-binary woman. She says the objections to trans women accessing female spaces just don't add up. Trans people disproportionately face domestic violence and sexual assault. We need access to services. We've had the Equality Act for the last eight years, and that's actually the act that allows trans women to enter women's spaces. It's a, lot of, a long time for these abuses to take place, but they, they haven't. The evidence isn't there. It wasn't easy finding Jess. Most trans people we approached were reluctant to go on camera, some scared of repercussions, others refusing to appear on a programme alongside the feminists. Trans people are very, very scared of talking publicly about trans issues. Like, I know that simply by doing this piece of media that I will be hounded on social media. It's actually a really hostile time for trans people. One of the things about the Gender Recognition Act debate um, and consultation is that it's, it's kind of given licence to uh, anti-trans uh, activists um, to kind of spark a, a public debate about trans identities and trans people in a way that has felt very violent. <laughs> And there's hostility on both sides. These are trans activists protesting outside a feminist meeting. They're shouting TERF. It stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminists. Across the country, clashes are erupting between the two groups. So many problems in the past when we've announced venues ahead of, of time where trans rights activists have um, phoned the venue over and over again asking them to no, no platform us because they consider us a hate group. Hannah is at a meeting of women who feel they've been excluded from the discussion about changes to the Gender Recognition Act. One woman told us how she'd been attacked by a trans activist at another meeting who was later found guilty of assault. I'm still angry about the assault. I'm angry about the trial. My anger could lift a bus, in fact. I understand that gender dysphoria is a very, very serious and upsetting thing, but they cannot actually be women. Uh, the, the most they can be is what we call trans women. Or pro-lesbian position. And there's more trouble at today's event, this time over lesbian rights. You're gonna, you're gonna check me out, yeah? Fair enough. Like, do it. We just don't need to leave. a lot of transphobia going around this evening. I don't think so generally. I think most people in the room are forward-thinking people that are trying to get their heads around, you know, the nonsense in society. Um, Lisa. And at this year's London Pride, protesters also disrupted the parade, claiming the trans movement is anti-lesbian. Absolutely shocked at the level of vitriol, the level of silencing.
even asking for the discussion is thought of as transphobic. Dr Heather Brunskill Evans wrote a book on trans children. She's on her way to speak at an event where again she's met by opposition. Hey ho ho, transphobia has got to go. Hey hey ho ho, transphobia has got to go. And trans men, what's about to Trans men are there. These groups, they sit and perpetuate a hateful rhetoric. No one has the right to tell you how you want to or do not want to identify, that is up to you. I haven't started any kind of uh, hormone therapy yet or a full transition, so what will happen to the Gender Recognition Act directly affects me. We weren't allowed to film inside this meeting, but back at her home, Heather describes the aggression she's faced. Well, are you blocking us? Don't you dare. Are you uh, can somebody film this? Here, a group of protesters are blocking her way. We need to get into there. I don't like being on a stairwell where I'm frightened that I'm going to be pushed down by a man with a balaclava and a mask who's telling me that he's a woman. And that if I don't accept that, I'm a Nazi. It's extremely frightening. It should be possible to have a discussion where there are a range of different people with a range of different truths who can enter into a dialogue about this. But what does the public think? According to the British Social Attitudes Survey, people seem to be pretty liberal, with 84% claiming not to be prejudiced at all against transgender people. And when asked if most people who are transgender go through the process because of a superficial or temporary need, only 12% of women agreed and 18% of men. 72% of women said they were comfortable or very comfortable with a transgender woman using a female public toilet, with 65% of men saying they were comfortable or very comfortable. This is a fight, this is a struggle for women's rights, and it's an urgent fight. Staunch feminists like Dr Nicola Williams argue the public hasn't been given enough information to fully understand what's at stake. We have to find this courage to, to speak out. By me acknowledging that a trans woman has a male body, could be considered hate. Trans women are, by definition, male. You know, they were born male. You know, I don't say that to be um, offensive. You know, it's fact. I've got no problem with trans people living um, in role as a woman because gender dysphoria is real. There are times when biological sex does matter uh, for safeguarding, um, for privacy and dignity, fairness in sports, for example, and that's when the sex of per a, a person um, must be acknowledged. In a society, we always have checks and balances. We have, we, we, so that people do not abuse the system. The question of who decides who gets to be a woman seems destined to become more polarised. The centuries-long fight for women's rights engulfed by a whole new conflict. What makes a woman? I don't think there is such a thing as a real woman. We must not confuse ideology with biology. Being transgender is not an illness. I want to live in a world where being trans, if it is a choice, then it's a valid choice. I know I'm not bigoted. I know that people are going to call me that. People are so, so angry and so against something that they just don't understand. We must have debate about something which potentially affects huge numbers of people.